Well, good morning, church. Are you here today? Is the church here today? Good morning, church. One more time. Good morning, church. That's better. Happy Palm Sunday to everyone. What an awesome day today is. You know, today marks the day that our king rode on a foal of a donkey into the gates of Jerusalem. And, and, and the people cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Are you guys ready to celebrate today? All right. Well, you know, it, it's another special day today because we're doing baptisms today. That's awesome. Not only baptism, we're doing nine baptisms. Nine baptisms. Praise God. You know, one thing before we get to get to that, I'd like to ask how many of you were able to come out yesterday to the second annual picnic on the grounds? What an awesome day. Well, the Lord really came through with the weather. We were a little concerned about the wind, but man, he kept it just, just cool enough so we could enjoy what an awesome day. You know, there are a lot of people that, that put that together that made that happen. And I wouldn't, I can't stand up here for that put that together and we're so grateful, okay? Well, you guys ready to uh, be a part of someone's life as they get baptized? All right, well, Pastor Parkey is downstairs and he should be joining us here. There he is. Good morning, Pastor. said good morning. Can you speak again? If you can hear us, we cannot hear you. Hey, there we go. Good morning, everyone. You know, we've got nine people following the Lord in death, burial, and resurrection this morning. It's a great group, and so we're going to get started today. So join with us in celebration. You guys can be seated if you'd like. This may take a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You okay? It's warm. Yeah, it's warm for sure. You got used to it yet? Come on down. Sit down right there, girl. Just sit right there. Oh, oh, she's okay. You know, this is as close to hell as she's going to get right here. This water's warm this morning. Very warm this morning. Well, look up there and tell everyone your name. Deborah Jackson. Deborah Jackson. Deborah is Jesus Lord of your life? Yes, he is. I know he is because I've watched you. Well, based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Here we go. Got a big crowd out here watching today, man. A huge crowd. Lots of kids. And everybody. Come on down. Oh. Now, hold your breath. That water's warm. You okay? There you go. Hold on to that rail. You're doing good, buddy. Ow. Ow, yeah, it gets warm at the bottom. One more step. You're good. Okay, come on over, bud. And then you're just going to sit right here. You okay? You okay? You want me to get a bag of ice and put it in there? Oh, oh, oh. It's going to feel good in a minute. <laughs> well, look up. <laughs> we're, we're giving them a little taste of what they missed uh, this morning, uh, which was something very hot to go into eternal life. Look up there and tell everybody what your name is. Jonah Peterson. Jonah Peterson. Jonah is going into the water. That seems fitting. Jonah, is Jesus Lord of your life? Is he? He is? Okay. You sure? 
Hmm? You love him in here? You do, don't you? Yeah, I know you do. Well, based on your profession of faith, Jonah, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here we go in the name of Jesus. Oh, down you go. Down you go. sure about that, I don't think. <laughs> we, got him. we got him, don't worry. We got him. <laughs> Come on in, man. All right. It might be a little warm. I don't think it'll cook you too bad. Just sit down right there, Gustavo. Sit on the edge of that thing. You okay? You okay? Look up there at the camera. Tell everybody your name. Gustavo Rosero. Gustavo. Gustavo got saved about a week ago, didn't you? Yes, I did. Praise the Lord. Yes. Gustavo, is Jesus your Lord? Yes, he is. All right. Well, based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, and I'll do all the work. You ready? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Just sit right on the edge of there, okay? All right. Look up there and tell everybody your name. Donald Suter. Donald, is Jesus Lord of your life? Yes, he is. He is. Well, based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, Donald, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You ready? All right. Hallelujah. Praise you. I tell you what, if we get any more people, we're going to have to get Pastor Paul in here with some waiters. We're going to have to do a double at the same time. Come on down. Come and sit right there. Look up at that camera and tell everyone your name. Carol Galindo. Carol Galindo. Carol, is Jesus Lord of your life? Absolutely. Absolutely, I believe that. Well, based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Now we have the Black Robe Regiment coming in. <laughs> Praise God. They have a long history here in America from serving the Lord. Yes, they do. Come on down here, man. Sit right on the edge of that thing. Yeah, it's warm. That'll remind you what you escaped. Look up, look up there and tell everybody your name. Domingo Galindo. Domingo Galindo. And you're related to the one who got baptized for you? Yes. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Yes, I believe it. I've seen it. Well, based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Hallelujah. 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 Man, we're having fun down here. Come on in. The water's fine. It's cooling off a little. Come on in. Just sit right on the edge of that, man. All right. It is a little warm. A little warm, yeah. Look up there and tell everyone your name. Victor Vargas. Victor Vargas. Victor, is Jesus your Lord? Yes, sir. He is. All right. Well, based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, I'm going to baptize you into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You ready? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You did it. God did it. 
it. Hallelujah. 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 All right, come on in. Hallelujah. You can wear your shoes if you want. Those will be okay, won't they? Come on down. It might be a little warm. Sit right on the edge there, okay? Now look up there and tell everyone your name. Josiah. Josiah. Hmm, that's a good name. That's good. Is that your dad standing right there? It is? Well, he told me to hold you under a long time. All right? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Yes, sir. Okay, well, based on your profession of faith in Jesus, I'm going to baptize you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You ready? You can close your eyes. You can keep them open, whatever, whatever you want to do. I think with the water this warm, I'd close them. You ready? We don't want them cooked. Here we go. Down you go, all the way in the grave, all the way. Woo! got to go all the way in to get all the way out. You know what I mean? That's right. Hallelujah. All right, we're going from young to mature. Yes, we are. Help her down here, Mr. Don. Hallelujah. All right, come on down, honey. He's got you, okay? Don't you worry. If he has to come in with you, he will. It's a little warm, okay? But I think some of these guys have cooled it off a little. There you go, darling. One more step and I got you, okay? It's a little warm, honey. Is it too warm for you? You okay? You okay? One more step. You all right? Yeah, one more. Good. Yeah, just one more. That's it. You okay? You all right? Okay. Sit right there. Okay. You all right? All right. Can you sit? Now look up there at all those people and tell them your name. Joyce. Joyce? I'm going to tell you now. I want you to look. Power of God. I know this woman's been serving the Lord for a while, but the power of God is so strong, it will touch you no matter where you are in life. Yes. Joyce, is Jesus Lord of your life? Yes. I know he is. Well, you know what? Based upon your profession of faith, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you want to go down in the water or you want me to dunk it on you? Dunk it on you. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name. 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 I'm getting it all over. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How you go? Hallelujah. 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 Okay, sweetie. We'll get you out of there. Out of the grave and go walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. We only, we're only coming here one time. Amen. Anybody else? All right. That's it, everybody. Praise God. Thank you for enjoying it with us. Let's worship the Lord. Amen, church. Let us stand up. Let us worship King Jesus. Who's come to worship Jesus this morning? Amen. The Bible says, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us sing.
face the day we have strength every single day in your presence all our fears are washed away because when we see you lord because when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away
We'll sing Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus, with our praise.
the church sings this. You are the king that gave us powerful and full of love. You are the king. back to why is he worthy because God can do things that no one else can do you know there are things that are reserved for him he the and what I mean by that is only he can do only he can save our soul only he can make us clean only he can uh, make us live a life that's a righteous life only he can and you know this morning uh, if you're here today and you need something from the Lord then that's what we're here for today is for you to be able to touch the Lord and, and let him minister to you. So if you're out there and you need something from God today, I just want you right where you are, I just want you to lift your hands straight up to him and just say, Lord, I, I need you. I need you. Just lift your hands straight up to him today. Now, all of you that are around, we're going to do some body ministry today. If you see somebody with their hand up, I want you to lay your hand on them. Okay? And we're going to come into agreement. That God's going to touch them and minister to them, all right? So don't be shy. You can put your hand right up if you need something from the Lord. That's what we're here for today, okay? Look around you and see. If you can't see, we'll pull the lights up just a little bit so you can see out there, all right? All right, now that you guys are settled in with someone, let's, let's pray. Lord God Almighty, We come to you with the words you alone ringing in our hearts. Lord, there are things that we know, there are places we know that only God can touch. Lord, I thank you for being here with us this morning. Same spirit that Jesus carried 
upon him is here today. Lord, not a trial spirit, not a partial spirit, but the same spirit. And Lord, you're here to save this morning. You're here to deliver this morning. You're here to touch people this morning. So God, I pray that as we come into agreement with the people that are here, that are calling out to you, I pray you would touch them with a power that can only be explained through the fact that it's Jesus who did it. It was Jesus who did it. Show yourself mighty here today, oh God. Show yourself mighty here today, oh God. Show yourself mighty here today, oh God. And we break off of the people. We come into agreement to break off of them things that are troubling them and causing them issues and problems and discomfort and disease. Lord, your will be done over them. Let freedom ring and reign in their lives, Lord. Father, I thank you for the deliverance of the Holy Spirit. God, you are good and you are worthy. Lord, today we just pronounce liberty over them in Jesus' name. Liberty. Liberty. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free. Leave God's people. Leave the people. Lord, you come and tabernacle on them and in them. God, we praise you for your deliverance today. We praise you for your deliverance today in Jesus' holy name. Thank you for it, God. Thank you for it, God. If you're out there today and, and you, uh, you have something, okay, come on. Come on. Someone has um, stroke symptoms on the right side of your head. You may have already had a stroke. But in Jesus' name, the symptoms have to go now. We command them to go. We command them to leave. You have on the helmet of salvation. The Lord paid for your healing. Yes. So don't let the enemy fill you with fear. Those stroke symptoms have to go now in Jesus' name. Father, we command the right amount of blood flow in these heads, Father, through these brains. God, we, we command pray. any aneurysms or any clots to dissolve now yes. in Jesus' name. Lord, Father, we command the right amount of pressure yes. in these heads, in these brains. And Father, I thank you that we have the mind of Christ and that mind says that we are healed by the stripes on your back. There's no doubt. There's no doubt and there's no fear in Jesus' name. Thank you, oh God, that any stroke symptoms have to go now and these bodies have to line up with the word of God. In Thank Jesus' you, name. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. If that's you and you... You say, that was me, I want you to reach out and grab the healing of the Lord. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, before we go any further with anything, you know, I was standing here a minute ago and I just heard the call of Jesus go out. I, it's so personal that I, I, can, I just heard God calling people's names. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like he's just calling people to himself. You know, he's, he's saying, yes, you, you're the one. You're the one that I'm calling. If you're here today and you need to give your life to Jesus, then now's the time because God's calling you. And you know what? If you want to come up here and stand with me, I'll pray with you up here. But we're going to pray. We're going to, we're going to ask God to come and be our Lord at his call. He's calling, okay? So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Now listen, you can hear him calling you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sin. Not just, Lord, what I've done. I need forgiveness for that. But God, I need forgiveness for a life of sin life of rebellion against you 
Lord, I confess I've run from you. I've hid from you. And there's somebody in here that's even been afraid of God. Lord, I've been afraid of you. I've been afraid of you. But Lord, today stops my life of running and rebellion. Lord, I'm asking you to come into my life and rule as King and Lord in me. Father, wash away all my sins. And Lord, I'm asking you to fill me with the Holy Spirit of the living God. And Lord, I will walk with you the rest of my life. I will walk underneath your guidance and your direction. And Lord, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for saving me. Lord, I thank you right now for changing lives. I thank you that there are things that were operating before now that are broken in Jesus' name. People are changed today, Lord, because of you and your spirit. God, we give you all of the glory and the honor and the thanks for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that, you need to come down after the service and let us know, okay? Because you're on a different pathway right now, okay? Whatever you were on when you came in here, you've been, you've been translated. You off. You off of that, all right? God has set you free. You're not on the pathway to destruction anymore. Now you're on the pathway into life, an everlasting life. <laughs> God also has some great connections for you. When I said that, somebody got scared. You don't need to be afraid of that. You've been connected to death. Now get connected to life. Okay? You should be more afraid of what you came out of and not what you're going into. Because the Lord loves you, man. He loves you. So after service, come down and let us know that you prayed that. Okay? So we can walk with you. It's good to be with all of you today. You ready for Holy Week? Oh, me too. Best week of the year. Well, I know you've already hugged and loved on each other, so you may be seated this morning. Take a load off. My clothes are dry now. But you know what? I don't care because I like to get right in there with everybody. You know, when, I, when my clothes got all wet, when I baptized somebody and I felt that, and you know what? I said, Lord, thank God I can feel that. Thank God I can feel that. God is great and greatly to be praised. If you're here today for the first time, you've never been in this building on a Sunday morning. Wave at the guys that are walking around because they want to say hi to you, and they've got something for you, okay, that'll get you a gift right after the service is over. Downstairs, yeah, I guess what? The Connect Center's open downstairs now. And so we are getting back to some semblance of abnormal around here. And uh, so the Connect Center is open. I want, I want to uh, thank Karen Gordon for doing a lot of work and getting the Connect Center ready for us. And we're going to have people downstairs in the Connect Center, which is right down the center stairs, just down below, after the service is over. And we want to meet you and, and, uh, and just give you a gift and just tell you how much we love you. And if, if you got saved today, I think that's where I would go. It's right down there. And I'd talk to somebody. I'd tell them, i said, say, this is what happened to me today. And we may hear some screaming and hollering coming out of that room as people celebrate with you. It's a great, great day. Well, you know, let's worship the Lord with our giving this morning. And uh, praise God, Pastor Paul's excited, yeah. And uh, you know, I was thinking about something that I had never, well, I wasn't thinking about it. God revealed something to me last night when I was studying that I'd never seen before. In several of the gospels, but let's focus in on John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, it tells us that six days before Passover, something pretty incredible happened. Well, that's about where we are on the calendar about six days or so before. And it says that Jesus was at the home of Lazarus in the town of Bethany. Well, you know, when most kings come to town, they stay in the nicest hotel. Celebrities 
they all stay in the nicest place in town. They rent off whole floors so nobody can bother them. Let me tell you what Jesus did. Jesus went, every time he came to Jerusalem, almost every time he stayed either in the Garden of Gethsemane, he just slept outside, or he stayed in Bethany. And you may remember what I've told you before, but the town Bethany, the name means the poorhouse. And Jesus would stay in the poorhouse when he came to Jerusalem. Think about that, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He would go and he would stay where people couldn't, uh, where other people couldn't, couldn't afford to go, where they couldn't afford to go, that's, and where they were able to go, that's where he, he went and stayed. And after he raised Lazarus from the dead, they had a dinner for Jesus. And Mary came in, and the Bible tells us that Mary had, it says in the Bible, a pint, but that's not what it is. Mary came in with, it, at minimum, in the original language, a half a liter a very expensive perfume, a half a liter. So some of you can, can kind of picture what that is. You know, a, a, a half a liter, a liter is I think about 33 ounces. So a half a liter would be around 16 or so, okay? So it would be a full can of Coke plus about a half a can. Okay, a full can of Coke plus about a half a can on top of that. Bible says that she came in and she poured all of that on Jesus. All of it. Bible says it was so powerful that the, the smell of the perfume filled the whole place where they were, where they were that day. And when some people watched what happened, you know what they said? They said, why this waste? Why this waste? This money could have been used for a, a more reasonable or significant purpose than just pouring, pouring it out on the Lord, all of it. I mean, it didn't dab, you know, like we do with some perfume, one squirt. She went, and you know what? There's a chance that that was her dowry for when she was going to marry, that her parents had given her this gift that was worth a year's wages, the Bible tells us had given that to her as part of her dowry when she got married. And you know what? She took that, probably the most precious thing she had financially and emotionally. And she took that and she poured that out all on the Lord. You know, and somebody gave a politically correct answer. I think it was Judas who said, well, since we're in the poor part of town, couldn't we have sold that and, and given that money to the poor? Judas would have made a good politician. We got a lot of Judases in our political system. But off of that. And Jesus protected her, and he rebuked everybody else for saying that. And you know what the Lord showed me? There's a priority that's higher than any other priority. And that's Jesus and our relationship with him. And man, this money could have been used for a lot of things, a lot of things. But it, when it went out on Jesus, she showed the priority that he had. She was showing the priority upon him. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. He said, she has done a good thing. And so, you know, today I was thinking, if we can show our priority to the Lord, even in our giving, that had to do with something material. And if we can show our priority on the Lord, even in our giving and other things, you know, the Lord's going to say, that's a good thing. And, you know, he, he took care of all, he, and he does still take care of all those that are his own. So today, we're going to give to the Lord in worship. My wife's going to hold the globe, and I think all the money that comes into the globe today, that's missions money, and you can do missions online, is going to go to help our team of about 17 people go to Kenya. It costs a lot to, to, to finance 17, to, to, for 17 people to go to Kenya. It takes a lot of money. And they're raising money and they're doing other things and they're working hard. But those of you who say, I don't ever want to go to Kenya, how many of you say, just be honest, I don't ever want to go to Kenya? Just raise your hand. God won't, you're not going to hell for that answer. Okay, every single one of you guys that raised your hand, you're on schedule now for God to go to Kenya. 
My wife said, boy, I tell you, she'll tell you, don't ever tell God there's things I won't do. You're on schedule now. No. Well, you know what? Help other people go. Help somebody else go. It's a team that's going to represent us. You have anything you want to say about it? No? Okay. All right, let's pray and we'll give today. Father, we give you thanks for everything you've done and all that you are. You are glorious and you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, we're sending people out of Capstone. We're shooting an arrow out of this place. And we have a destination, an aim. It's going right at Kenya. And this team's going to go all over the nation while they're there, north, south, east, and west. And Lord, they're going to minister. And they're going to be a part of what God's doing there. And they're going to speak words of life into the people that are on the ground there in Kenya. They're going to serve them. They're going to wash their feet. They're going to feed children in feeding stations. And they're going to bless them just like you bless the children. And they're going to minister in churches in Kenya. And God, we give you glory. And Father, we give into the kingdom of God our tithes and our offerings above that for your glory. For you know what, Lord, make us all into Mary's. Just like we read about in the scripture. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. God bless you as you give. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. And I'm gonna see in the middle of the storm. Well, it's Palm Sunday and we are officially in Holy Week. We're excited to announce that it has been one year since our podcast, Fringes of the Faith, launched last year during Holy Week. And season three will be kicking off next Tuesday, April 19th, the week after Easter. Episode one is a controversial one, diving into discussion about the rise of LGBT lobbying into the mainstream media. And it's an important one to watch with everything that's been happening this past month. So mark your calendars and tune in on the 19th. Right after these announcements, Pastor Parkey will walk us through Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday, but we want to invite you to walk with us on the rest of Jesus' journey, starting at our Passover celebration this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. It's an abridged Seder like we've done in the past, learning about the Jewish Passover. Please get signed up today so we have enough seats prepared for everyone. Moving along on Friday night, we'll reflect on the difficult sacrifice Christ made for us on the cross at our quick annual Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Then, of course, we'll be wrapping up Holy Week with our Easter celebration service. We have a lot of exciting things planned both for the service and also that we will be announcing. Be sure to invite someone this week. This is your last chance. The last of the invites have been put out and there is literally no better or easier time to invite someone to church and then actually come than on Easter. And finally, following Easter, we always love to provide the opportunity for new visitors to join the church as a member. So if this is something you've been considering, then get signed up for our next Connections New Members class on Sunday, May 1st. This class will run through the evening, give you a chance to meet our pastors while learning our beliefs here at Capstone, plus dinner and childcare will be provided. That's it for me. Of course, you can learn more about all of this over on our website, www.capstone.church. And you can find us on social media everywhere at Capstone Bember. Now, let's take a look at Jesus' entry into Jerusalem.
You know, don't forget, this is a great week, and we're going to be walking with Jesus all week long. The next time we're going to gather together is going to be Wednesday night, okay? We're going to get together for the Seder meal, for the Passover. And it's going to be a ceremonial Seder, so unless you like to eat unleavened bread, a whole lot of it, uh, eat before you come, dinner, okay? But we're going to get together, we're going to celebrate the Passover, and if you've never done this before, you need to do it, because it'll open your eyes like, to things that you've never, never seen before. And if some of you say, I've already been there and done that, uh, you know, I don't need to do that anymore, you would make a terrible Jewish person, <laughs> you know, because they did this every single year without fail, okay? So can't wait to see you. You need to sign up today, though, because we've, we've got to close out signups to get prepared, all right? Well, as you saw on the video, today is the very beginning of Holy Week. And I know I'm prejudiced, but I think because of the things that happened this week in the life of Jesus, I can say without any fear of con contradiction that this is the most powerful week in the history of all humanity. Leading up to Holy Week, for over 1,000 years, the Jewish people had been celebrating a deliverance that God had done for them. But that celebration that they did every year as we just talked about, the Passover, all those celebrations for 1,000 years was only a dress rehearsal for what would transpire this week in Jerusalem. Now, Jesus has been ministering in Israel now for over three years. And controversy follows him as he heads toward Jerusalem in obedience to the command that three times a year at three festivals each year that all the males would appear before God in Israel and Passover was one of those and controversy was surrounding Jesus as he goes toward Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And you know there's two things happening to Jesus as Jesus enters Jerusalem is what I'm trying to say. Two things are happening. One is very visible and one's a little harder to see but it's very real. And to get an understanding of both of those things we're going to have to start today on a command that was given to the Jewish people way back before the Lord Jesus ever was on the scene in human flesh in Jerusalem. It was a command given to Moses year before. So let's start in the book of Exodus chapter 12. We're going to start in Exodus. We're going to read several verses in chapter 12. And so here we go. You ready? All right, three people are ready, and one of them's a pastor. Oh, well, okay. There's my wife. Hallelujah. All right, now let's go anyway, because, you know, we can't wait on everybody till they get ready. One day Jesus is going to show up, and you're going to say, Lord, I'm not ready. That's what the five foolish virgins said. You know, hey, uh, we, we, you know, we were connected to you, Lord, but we're not quite ready. Our lamps aren't quite ready for your appear, appearance. And they're gonna, while they're off trying to get prepared, he's going to enter in with all of his people, and they're going to go in, and then they're going to be knocking on the door. He's going to say, you know what, I, I don't know you. So it's time to get ready. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. So they're still in Egypt, okay? They haven't been delivered yet. They're still in bondage in Egypt. And he said to them, this month shall be your beginning of months. Now, I want you to notice that this is a prophetic word. As I said earlier, the events haven't taken place yet that have freed Israel and even made it a, uh, an option for them to even create their own calendar. They're living in Egypt. The Egyptians have a calendar. They're slaves. They have to do what the Egyptians do in so many ways. They don't have... The, the ability to, to create things and to, and to institute new things because they're in bondage. And the Lord will often prophesy something to you before it actually comes to pass. And that's what he's doing. He's saying, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th of the first month of the year... Every man, no one was exempt. 
Every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Everyone needs a lamb, and every household needs a lamb. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor come together and take it according to the number of persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now, you shall keep it, you shall take it on the tenth day into your house, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood And put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Now that's what the command of God was to the Israelites. And then in verse 14, let's jump down, it continues. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Okay, let's jump on down. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the first day you shall remove leaven from all your houses. What's leaven a symbol of? Leaven was a symbol in the Jewish society of sin. He said, you shall remove all leaven from your houses, for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Let's go down to verse 26, and we'll be finished here in a minute. And it shall be when your children say to you, have you been preaching and teaching your children? And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service that you do? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. And when the people heard all of this, they bowed their heads and they worshiped. You know, the Lord delivered Israel from bondage in Egypt. It's a historical fact. And he did it through the Lord's Passover. And all God's promises to the children of Israel came to pass. Not only did he promise he would take them out of Egypt and cease their bondage, he promised he would take them into a land that would be their very own. And God kept all of his promises. Everybody say, God keeps his promises. But through the years, after God kept his promises to them, through the years, Israel had turned away from the Lord. And they had been giving him religion rather than their hearts. And Moses, the lawgiver, the one who God had spoken to about the Passover and spoken to about the creation of a nation of people that were dedicated to God, God also spoke to Moses, and Moses had prophesied to the children of Israel of a coming king who would be another type of deliverer for them. And down through Israel's history, this prophecy that was uttered out of the mouth of Moses was reiterated and expounded upon by the prophets of the Old Testament. Now, Many people believed Jesus to be that messianic deliverer that had been spoken of by Israel's prophets. He had done so many mighty things. He had amazed the people. He had taught them. And his teachings were focused on the heart of God rather than on the letter of the law. And as he had done that, he had exposed the sin of God's people But at the same time that the sin was exposed, he had told them that the kingdom of heaven was near. He told them that those who wanted entry could do so through accepting him as their Messiah. And this teaching caused him to be called Messiah by so many that heard him. And it also caused him to be called blasphemer by many of the religious leaders. So here we are on the first day of Holy Week, that what the, day, the day that we call Palm Sunday. 
And on the, Egypt, on the Israeli, excuse me, not Egyptian, but the Israeli calendar, it's the 10th day of the first month of the year. And that's where we're going to pick up the story right now. Are you ready? Okay, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11 is what we'll read, and then we'll, we'll dive off the diving board there. Now when they, as Jesus and his disciples and a, a huge group of people that were following him, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, and we're going we're to go there to the Mount of Olives next year, our first interest meeting for all of you who want to make this trip is July 10th of this year after church, but we're going to go there next year. We're going to stand right, right on the place where Jesus began this journey. When they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples and he said to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Lowly. Everyone say lowly. Lowly. He's not on a steed. He's not on a stallion. He's not going into warfare right now. He's not here to judge. He's not here to conquer. He's lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and they laid their clothes on them and set him on it. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Well, this is weird. Well, we'll talk about this in a minute. And others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, this first line of praise is very important. Here's actually what they're saying in our language. Here's the translation. Save us, Messiah. Hosanna means save. Son of David, meaning Messiah. Save Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus said Israel wouldn't see him again until they said that again. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, the whole city was moved. I bet. Saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, remember the backdrop of the story. It's, one, it's a very important feast in the, in the calendar of Israel, in their walk with God. It's the feast where all the people gather into Jerusalem to celebrate, and all the men come from all over Jerusalem, bring their families, and all men come, and they gather there. So there was a huge crowd in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And those that were in Jerusalem had seen everything that Jesus had done. They had seen it. They had seen him feed the masses. They had seen him heal the sick. They had seen him raise the dead. They had seen him free the tormented. Boy, he was just the right guy to be a king. He could do all those things, man. They were excited about that. But the truth is, is that Jesus was and is the king of Israel. And he fulfilled all the prophecies that were given about the coming Messiah. So you read about what happened. He gets on the, this donkey and he begins to ride into Jerusalem and the people are shouting shouts of praise. He rode in, as I said, on this donkey, which was in these days and in Israel, it was the preferred transportation of a king who was not coming to conquer, but a king coming to bless his people and in peace. When kings in Israel, they would often ride on donkeys, and that was a transportation that showed their people that they were there in peace. They were there to bring peace to the people. And the people spread their clothes out, not only on the donkey, but they spread their clothes out before him. And that's also a Jewish tradition. And it's welcoming a king of great importance. That's how they showed that someone of extreme importance was appearing. They would lay their clothes down before him. 
And they waved green branches, which was another Jewish tradition which welcomed in a conquering hero. And what did they cry out? They cried out the cries of welcome to the Messiah that had been given to them by the prophets all down throughout the history of Israel. They were crying out, and their cries were recognizing Jesus to be the Messiah of Israel. It was easy to see that day that the king was there. That was one of the things that was easy to see. I told you there were two things happening that day, one that was easy to see, one that was not so easy to see, but just as real. The people were affirming Jesus as their Messiah on that day as he rode into Jerusalem. Well, what was the unseen event that was happening at the same time? At the time that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, and the crowd's coming in and the shouts are going up, the clothes are laid down and the palm branches are being laid on the road and, and being waved around by the people. Remember, Jesus entered Jerusalem on what day? On the 10th day of the first month of the year. What was happening at the same time Jesus was riding into Jerusalem? At the same time that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, the high priest of Israel was just a few miles away, just a very short distance away. He was in a town called Bethlehem. And the high priest of Israel was there, and you know what he was, he was doing there? He was in Bethlehem because that's where the lambs that were used for Passover were raised, was in, Israel, was in Bethlehem. Now, who was born in Bethlehem? Jesus. Okay? So at the same time Jesus rides into town, the high priest is in Bethlehem choosing the lamb, the perfect lamb, that he will bring back to Jerusalem and will be slaughtered for the sins of Israel. So the priests and the people are all lining the streets in that day in anticipation of the high priest coming back with the lamb that's going to be slain. They're waiting for that procession. But a different procession comes in first. Jesus comes in riding in on a donkey, and the people began to shout and praise him. They began to shout recognition of him as the Messiah. They began to give him praise. They began to welcome him. And the priests that are standing there, they're, they got to be a little bit confused and not too happy. And they asked Jesus to rebuke the messianic shouts of the people and Jesus' reply was very simply this. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If these people should keep silent, he said, the stones of this city will immediately begin to shout. I think about that every time we go to Israel, we walk into Jerusalem. I look at those stones and I say, man, these stones, Jesus said, these very stones themselves would bear testimony of the king that is of that city as he enters in that day. And you know, unbeknownst to all the people that were there that day, I mean, they didn't really recognize what was happening, when it was happening. But Jesus is being affirmed by the people as God's choice for them. They're recognizing him as God's choice for them. And Jesus, if you read the scriptures, he just doesn't come in and get off the donkey and start shaking hands and kissing babies. Jesus rides straight into Jerusalem. He rides straight to the temple. And that's very, very important because he rides the same route that the high priest would walk the lamb that was chosen for sacrifice for the people of Israel. He rode that same pathway to the temple that the high priest would take the lamb. And on the day in which God ordered the choosing of the Passover lamb for slaughter, Jesus, the sinless Son of God, enters Jerusalem on the 10th day. And he stays in Jerusalem. He stays in that area and comes into Jerusalem all week long. And he is inspected with hard questions and challenged with hard questions by the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees 
all week long. He's inspected for the four days until the time of the slaughter of the Passover lamb. The religious leaders and those who claim to be the leaders of Israel, they ply him with hard questions and no one could find any fault in him, including the Roman leader who was later a part of his death. The Roman leader walked out before everybody and said, I find no fault in this man. All week long, no one could catch him. No one could catch him in a lie. No one could, could catch him and, and twist his words around and show that they weren't from God. As a matter of fact, the more he spoke that whole week, the more he convicted those whose hearts were hard against him. So do you see the irony? Okay, think about this for a second, and we're going to close. The king sent by God to rule. Everybody recognized that. The king sent by God to rule is en route to death. You know, we, had a, we have a song that we used to sing, a uh, song written by a guy we went to church with when I was first saved, named Tim Shepherd. He wrote a song about Jesus. He said, born to die, to rise again, to crush the power of Satan's sin. And so what was not so easy to see that day until after Jesus was raised from the dead and and the Holy Spirit began to enlighten people's eyes, was that Jesus not only came into town as the king of, of Israel, as the Messiah of Israel, but he came into town as God's chosen sacrifice for the sin of the people. And the good news is, is it doesn't stop with the Jewish people. All down through history, the prophets not only prophesied of Israel's deliverer, but they prophesied about the deliverer of the world. And so this week, today, begins this most momentous week in the history of humanity. And Jesus enters in of his own free will. He enters in to Jerusalem, knowing what's going to take place all week long. And he does that willingly, and he does it riding on an instrument of peace, saying to you and I, I'm here for you. I'm not here to destroy you. I'm here to save you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to abide with you. That's the heart of God. Now, one day, Jesus will return again, prophesied by the prophets of, of, of the Bible. And the next time he comes, he won't come on a donkey. He'll come on a white stallion, which indicates that he's coming for a different reason. The next time he's coming is the conqueror that he is. And everyone and everything that has been in rebellion with him he has to set right, or he's a fraud. His righteousness is not real. His love is not real. People talk about justice, justice. Do you know justice is a product to me of love? It's a heart to make things right. Wrongs that have been done to make them right. Suffering that has occurred to assuage it, to heal it, to deliver it, to give peace to those that are suffering. And so he's coming again one day on a stallion, but right now, folks, we better accept the king that's on the donkey. I'm sure glad he got on the shoulders of this, and I won't say the other word, I'll say donkey. Because that's exactly what I was before I knew him was a jack something. <laughs> but this week means a lot to me. And I hope it means a lot to you. And if you're really saved, it does. 
And you know, if you've given your life to the Lord, I hope that we can walk with you this week in the events of what really happened for you will unfold for you in a, in a fresh way all throughout this week as we walk with the Lord. I want to invite you to come to the four services this week and because each one of them say something very powerful about what the Lord did for us. But I'm so thankful that he did it for me because, well, let me just say it this way and then I'll close. A couple of Wednesday nights ago, I was preaching on the righteousness of the God. That's, that's something that's very hard for us to, to grasp because there's nothing else in our world that's absolutely pure and perfect. There's nothing, nothing exists that's absolutely pure. So it's very hard for us. We don't have anything in our, in our circle of life that, that we can look at and say, oh yeah, you know, I kind of get to understand what purity is because that, that's pure right there. Even a little child, which is the baby, which is the closest thing we have, we know that, that what is now cuddly and sweet will become a terrible too. You don't have to teach those kids how to sin. It's, it's innate. It's in them. <laughs> you know, they just do it. I always wondered, too, you never teach, have to teach a little boy how to shoot a gun. You know, you see a little boy walking around the house with something, a stick, something, pow, pow, pow. You know, I'm like, where did, <laughs> you don't have to teach them to sin or, or you know, or other things. They, they, all that stuff just is inbred in us. And, you know, as an illustration, I, I wanted to do an illustration for everybody. And I sat down and began to type out my sins that I, that I had before I knew the Lord. And when I did that, a realization hit me. I thought, oh, my God. I thought I was terrible. I thought I deserved judgment. Because one of them on my list was murder. I said, murder? You murdered somebody? Yeah. In the eyes of God, I did. I aborted an unborn child of mine. When I first got saved, and if you've done that, there's forgiveness. Thank God, or I couldn't be here. One of the things that struck me the most when I got saved that was the hardest one for me to admit. Matter of fact, when I was confessing my sins to the pastor, I asked my mother to leave the room. She was with me that day. I said, I can't say this in front of my mother. And she left, and I confessed that. And for many years, my greatest fear was this. What am I going to say to my child when I see them in heaven? I dreaded that meeting. And it was only through the forgiveness and sacrifice of Jesus that I was able to begin to look forward to that day instead of fear it. So you see, in each one of our lives, when I say, why are you telling us that, Pastor? Because in each one of our lives, we have things that there is no forgiveness for outside of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us have things in our lives that we deserve to be judged over and judged guilty. I was watching a forensic files one day and there was a guy that killed his own son and I was sitting there so indignant at that and then all of a sudden the memory came back, you did that. And I said, thank God for the blood. I could not lift my head in the presence of God were it not for him. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we owe him everything. We owe him everything. Everybody say everything. Because outside of him, you don't stand a chance. Well, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for all that you have done. I give you 
praise, honor, and glory for your goodness. I thank you for coming for me, a rebel. For Lord, I could not even be here today without the impending thought of judgment hanging over me if it wasn't for Jesus of Nazareth. So I praise you. I give you praise. Lord, I promise, I, I don't know what you're getting when you get me, but I, I'll let you have it all. You take it and you do with it what you want. Father, I'm looking forward to retaking this journey this week with you through Holy Week again. And as I take it, refresh and remind me of exactly what you've done for me and who you are. So Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have our prophetic teams going to be down here on one side at the end of the service to, if you need an encouraging word, come down and let them encourage you. Okay? We're also down in the Connect Center, as I said, going to be greeting our our guests here today, please come down there. And if you got saved today and gave your heart to the Lord, go down there to the Connect Center as well. Stop there, and they'll tell you what you need to do now from now, okay? Everything's changed, and they'll help you with a direction for your life. Just remember, we are one week away from Easter Sunday, and our campaign is Each One Reach One. There are very few cards over there, which lets me know that a lot of people may not be intending to invite anyone. I, that seems kind of incongruent with what Jesus has done. So, you know, if you want to write the names over there, we'll pray over them all week, and you can go out this week and begin to invite people. Don't forget, sign up for the Passover Seder today. Sign up today. Oh, and one more thing. All of you that are coming to the, to the Passover Seder Wednesday night, bring your shofars because at the end of the Seder, we're going to blow those things and blow them and blow them. Okay, we're going we're gonna to praise God with the shofar. All right, let's all stand. Mario Flores, a man of God, is going to bless you and he's going to send you out today. Amen. Thank you for the blood, amen. Praise God. Everybody stretch your hands to heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. God bless you. <laughs>